things that make a great CEO. I'm not talking about an average CEO. I'm talking about great CEO, an inspiring CEO. And I'm speaking from experience because I've been a CEO for three or four times in my life. So I know what I'm talking about in the sense of what works and what doesn't work and the successes and the mistakes that I have done. So this is real life stuff. It's not theoretical things. I've experienced what I'm going to share with you. Why does your organization exist? I'll share with you a story. So you have to forgive me in advance, but it's a true story. Once I was giving a keynote speech in a room that has had 200 CEOs, 200. So I asked this question, why are you in business? And one of them, actually many of them raised their hand and they presented the following answer. The most common answer that probably will come to your, to your mind as well. Of course we're in business to make profit. It's to make money. What was my comment? With your permission. I said to them, it was a risky statement, but I'll share it with you anyway. I, I said the following. How does that make you different from a prostitute? Because a prostitute is also in the business of making money. I know it's a heavy statement, but I needed to shock them. Because you can't lead a business with one fixation in mind that you're in this business to make money. This is not great CEO stuff. This is a, this is, this is a recipe for a long-term disaster. I'll tell you why. Do you need money? Of course you need money. Do you need to make profits? 100% you need to make profits. No questions about that. Otherwise, how can you sustain yourself? How can you sustain the operation? How can you invest in growth and development? How can you expand? How can you improve the quality of what, you, what you're offering to people? You need money and you have to make as much money as you can, of course with honor and within reason, but definitely you need to make money. But you're not in business to make money. If that was the case, then whenever I ask you a question, what do you do? You just tell them I make money. And how would that make you different from anybody else? Imagine, you know, a, your grandma asks you, what do you do, my son or my grandson? You tell them, I make money. And then somebody else, what do you do? Same question, I make money. It is partially true, but that's not why you're in business for that. At least that's not why your business is about. Now, how do you know that? Ask yourself, what was the main question in the mind of the founder of the business? And in most cases, at least in, in main company, you know, in famous companies, the main reason that these people started this company, they had an idea in mind. They had a purpose in mind. Henry Ford, he wanted to make, his purpose was to make cars affordable to average people. Purpose. Now, does that is profit, does that, can that be profitable? 100% and it should be profitable. But you're not in business to make money. It's like making money is like blood. Do you need blood? Of course you need blood, but you don't live for your blood. So having a clear purpose, it has to be absolutely clear in your mind. And you are, you have the chief purpose officer. That's how you think of yourself. And your job should be most of the time you spend just emphasizing this point and making sure that you're communicating it to everybody from the most senior to the most junior person in your, in your company. That's why we're in business. Purpose without strategy is a dream. So have a very smart strategy. And what strategy? We'll talk more about that in a different, you know, a different occasion. A strategy mainly is about choices. It's the grand plan. It's the major choices that you make for the purpose of fulfilling the original purpose of the organization, of what you're trying to do. And you need to have these choices. Why? Because you have limited resources. So you have to make major decisions. How do I use my limited resources to fulfill the purpose of my organization? I'll give an example. If you're in the hotel business, you have to make a decision. Are you a three-star hotel or five-star hotel? Are you an airport hotel or a business hotel? Are you a business hotel or a family hotel? Are you a family hotel or a resort hotel? What kind of, a, what kind of hotel are you? 
And these are important decisions because you can't be all of them at the same time. Because what's the strategy with if it's bad execution? In fact, it's a disaster. Because you would have wasted all the limited amount of resources and money and people and time that you have in creating something that either doesn't work or ugly. So imagine, okay, you have you have a clear purpose. Your purpose is to create, you know, a housing facility for travelers, you know, to create a home outside their home for business travelers. So that's your purpose. Great purpose. You have, you've made your strategic choices. You want to make a business hotel that's next to airport so that it can be more practical for people flying in to have conferences, meetings, and then leave. That's wonderful. Now imagine when you come to the execution, the finishing and the construction and the way this hotel is run is of little bad quality. You've just ruined absolutely everything. And from experience, since we're talking about hotels, I've spent most of my life traveling, of course, you know, in, in, uh, because of the nature of what I do. Sometimes it shocks me. I go to hotels that, you know, every piece is an art by itself. They've spent hundreds of millions on this, you know, on that product, on this place. But if you touch it, it has like, I don't know, one millimeter of dust. Or the whole thing looks horribly maintained because the execution was not proper. You, you go to the shower, you know, to, to have a shower and something breaks. The highest brand, it breaks. Why? Because it's not properly done. So execution, 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 because bad execution kills the smartest strategy and bad strategy kills the best purpose in mind. Have these three things and you're on your way of becoming the greatest CEO.